back to my corner of the internet. I'm Shannon and today I've got another book talk video to share with you guys and today we are talking about Beneath the Stairs by Jennifer Fawcett. This was an anticipated read for me. I couldn't wait for it to come out. First of all that cover. I love the yellow font against the dark blue and black of the stairs. Um, I knew it was going to be a haunted house type of story. It was a different one than I thought it was going to be which I liked. My only real complaint about this book was that it wasn't scarier because for haunted house stories I really love it when they take it that just step further into really scary and I think it was last year I read It Will Just Be Us by Joe Kaplan and that book did that for me. It scratched that itch and it scared the crap out of me and ever since then I've been like on the hunt for a book to reach that same level of scare for me personally because of course for each of us it's gonna vary what we find scary and it will just be us it was scary it was scary um anyway i can't wait for uh, joe's next book cannot wait anyway we're not here to talk about that we're here to talk about beneath the stairs so it is a haunted house story it's different than i thought it would be I don't know how much of spoilers we're going to get for this one because it's told from um, I think three or four different points of view from three or four different time periods so it would just take way too long to go through all of those details so I'm just going to give you the basic gist of the story let you know what I thought of it and then um, if I do give any spoilers which I don't think I'm going to but if I do I will definitely give you a warning because I never ever want to ruin anything for anyone. So the main character in this story from the main timeline, although we get two timelines from her, is Claire. Claire grew up in a small town called Sumner's Mill and um, she grew up there with her best friend Abby and now Claire is an adult and something terrible has happened to Abby. But in order to know what that is, we get the flashback scenes to understand why what happened happened. So what we first learn, sort of right off the bat, is that when Abby and Claire were kids, along with a couple of other young girls, they went into a haunted house in their town. It had, you know, it's that kind of house that, you know, a lot of small towns have, that old abandoned house that word gets around through the teenagers in town generation after generation that it's haunted or cursed or whatever and you know teenagers love to explore those types of buildings and this is no different. So Claire and her three friends go into this house when they're teenagers in 1998 and um, for most of them it was fine but for Abby it wasn't. She went down the stairs. <laughs> and she ended up um, seeing something in the basement. She didn't really even know what she saw. None of the other girls knew what she saw and after that she was never quite the same. Fast forward like 20-25 years to the present and um, Abby as an adult went back to that house um, because when they were there it felt as though something had woken up. So Abby, you know, for years after that, she's tormented by this house. So now eventually she ends up going back to it. And um, when questions are being asked and whatnot, uh, one of the locals who works at the convenience store said three days prior she had been in there. She bought gas. She tried to buy some snacks but didn't have enough money. But she filled her car up with gas even though she only ever ended up going the you know few miles away to the house and her car was just left there and that had been so that's three days prior from when Abby was found so they think that she was in the house for those three days when she's finally found it's um it looks as though she's tried to take her own life and she's done a lot of damage to herself she ends up being put into a coma in the hospital where the doctors are trying to save her life essentially Abby's mom calls Claire and says, can you come home? Um, 
she explains what happened to Abby and um, tells her that when she was being carried out of the house, she said Claire's name. She's like, can you come home? Can you help us? Can you come and see her, talk to her, um, read to her? You know, she's in a coma, but I bet she'd hear you. And clearly you were on her mind when she did that. So a lot of her friends and family think that that's what she did. She went there with the intention to harm herself, but there's something inside of Claire that believes that's not true, that that's not the case, that Abby wouldn't have done that, um, and that it was something inside the house that caused her to do that. So it's kind of the main gist of it. <laughs> uh, from there we get, again, a lot of flashback scenes to Claire and Abby when they were teenagers. And then we also get some more um, points of view. We learn about the man who built the house for his wife. And then we learn, so that was in, I think, like the 1930s or 40s. Then we learn about the man who bought it in the 1960s. And something very, very tragic happened in that house in the 1960s. It was a tragedy that the man who bought the house went to prison for, for like 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, a long time. <laughs> up until recently, so from the 19, 1965 until, you know, present day recently. he The only reason he's been let out is because he's very old and he's dying of cancer, so they move him instead to a nursing home, mainly because the case gets re-looked at and there was never really enough concrete evidence to um, proclaim him guilty, so they transfer him to the nursing home so he can die in a more comfortable area. So as we're going back and forth between these chapters, the story finally starts to make a lot of sense. Um, as we learn about, you know, the man who built it, the man who was convicted of harming his family, his entire family, even though he maintains until this day that he didn't do it. And Claire and Abby and their present and their past. And I just thought the story, I really, really, really thought it was really well woven together. I thought it was well written, well plotted, well planned, well executed. Again, my only complaint is that I wasn't more scared. Because <laughs> in my mind, it's less of a horror. I mean, there's definitely horror elements, but to me, it's less of a true horror and more of like a horror thriller. Um, and it was great. So if you want something that's a little spooky but not too spooky. This is your girl. <laughs> One other thing that bothers me just a little tiny bit is this cover, while I love it, and it's beautiful, um, this staircase does not equal the staircase I have in my mind when I read the book. Like, the way the book's described, it's like a, a staircase off the kitchen into the basement with a metal door even though it was built like way back in the 30s the man who built it he um he worked at like um like a metal factory and so he got uh, supplies from there to build this door and his um soon to be wife who he built the house for she thought that was really weird like the rest of the house was just beautiful wood just lovely and then there's this huge metal door <laughs> off the kitchen. At least I think it's off the kitchen. <laughs> I might just be projecting that, but um, this more looks like, you know, you come in the door, you're in the foyer, and then there's stairs up and down. But I didn't get that vibe when I was reading the book, which is nitpicky, I know, because the cover is beautiful. But um, it just wasn't the stairs I saw in my mind when I read the book. Anyway, I would definitely recommend. I gave this four stars on Goodreads. Loved it. And um, yeah, we'll definitely recommend again if you want something that's spooky, but not too spooky, more of a thriller, would definitely, would definitely say you should check this out. <laughs> anyway, you guys, that's gonna just about do it for me for tonight. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I hope you'll consider sticking around. Subscribe. <laughs> it's free. It helps me a lot. I would love that. And like, and um, I hope you have a great weekend. If you're watching this when it's posted. If not, I hope you have a great day, whatever day it is. <laughs> Bye, guys.